NASA just fired 4,000 workers in one brutal month. But this isn't just layoffs, it's America handing space dominance to Elon Musk on a silver platter. While NASA cancels Mars missions and kills nuclear rockets, SpaceX is quietly preparing to become the new NASA. The $24 billion question, will SpaceX save American space dreams, or is this the end of NASA forever? Let's write in. Here's the brutal truth NASA doesn't want you to know. While 4,000 brilliant scientists and engineers walked out the door in July, SpaceX was quietly hiring. Every NASA expert that left, SpaceX gains a potential recruit. Every canceled NASA program, SpaceX steps in to fill the void. This isn't just budget cuts. This is the largest government-sanctioned transfer of space dominance to a private company in history. And Elon Musk saw it coming years ago. July 2025 wasn't NASA's budget crisis. It was SpaceX's Christmas morning. The new administration slashed NASA's budget by $6 billion, from $24.9 billion down to $18.8 billion. But here's the twist. That same administration is now paying SpaceX billions more to do NASA's job. The first wave hit in March when NASA fired Dr. Catherine Calvin, one of their top climate scientists. Where do you think those climate research contracts went? Private companies. Companies like SpaceX that are already studying atmospheric conditions for Mars colonization. When 2,140 senior NASA employees got fired in one week, the space industry didn't mourn, they celebrated. These weren't random layoffs. We're talking about GS-15 level experts earning $160,000 annually, with decades of experience on the most complex space missions ever attempted. But here's what the media missed. 875 of those fired employees were the absolute top-tier managers and scientists in the agency. The people who designed the Mars rovers, built the James Webb telescope, and planned lunar missions. SpaceX doesn't need to steal NASA's secrets anymore. They're hiring the people who created them. Think about this. NASA spent 50 years training these experts, and now they're walking straight into SpaceX's offices. It's like Apple losing all their iPhone designers to Samsung, except this is America's space program. While NASA bleeds talent, SpaceX is already replacing their core missions. Remember the Mars sample return mission that got canceled? The $7 billion program that was supposed to bring back Martian soil? SpaceX's Starship can do that mission for under $100 million. One Starship launch costs less than 1% of NASA's canceled Mars program. But there's a bigger game being played here. China is racing ahead with their own Mars sample return mission while NASA abandons theirs. But SpaceX? They're not just planning to return samples. They're planning to send humans to Mars and bring them back alive. Who's really protecting America's space leadership now? Here's where it gets absolutely insane. NASA just canceled their entire nuclear propulsion program. Technology that could cut Mars travel time from nine months to three months. Project Draco, worth billions in development, dead overnight. But nuclear propulsion isn't dead. It's just moving to private hands. SpaceX is already developing nuclear-powered spacecraft concepts, and with NASA's nuclear experts now jobless, guess where they're headed? Elon Musk just acquired decades of nuclear rocket research for the cost of a few signing bonuses. NASA paid for the R&D, SpaceX gets the talent. The most shocking betrayal? The Trump administration wants to kill NASA's SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft after just two missions. That's $44 billion in taxpayer money down the drain after Artemis 2 and 3. Here's the kicker. They want NASA to use SpaceX's Starship instead. Let's do the math that's driving NASA scientists insane. NASA's SLS, $4 billion per launch, used once, thrown away SpaceX's Starship, under $10 million per launch, fully reusable, more powerful. It's not even close. NASA's own rocket costs 400 times more than SpaceX's. SpaceX could launch Starship 400 times for the cost of one SLS mission. But here's the question that's keeping NASA administrators awake. If SpaceX's rockets are better and cheaper, why does NASA still exist? Even the International Space Station is becoming SpaceX territory. NASA now depends on SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft for crew transportation, and they're extending mission durations not for science, 
but because budget cuts mean they can't afford to bring astronauts home on schedule. Meanwhile, private companies like Vast are developing new space stations to replace the aging ISS. NASA's building nothing. SpaceX and other private companies are building everything. The ISS will be deorbited in 2031. Its replacement won't have NASA's name on it. Here's the narrative they want you to believe. China is winning the space race while America cuts NASA's budget. But that's only half true. Yes, China is building space stations and planning moon bases while NASA fires scientists. But SpaceX is launching more rockets than China, building better spacecraft, and moving faster than any government space program in history. The real space race isn't America versus China anymore. It's government space programs versus private companies. And SpaceX is winning by a landslide. Every NASA mission that gets canceled pushes America closer to depending entirely on SpaceX. Is that failure or strategy? Here's the timeline that will determine America's space future. October 1st, 2025. That's when the new budget takes effect and more NASA programs die overnight. But SpaceX has been preparing for this moment for years. They've got Starship ready for Mars missions, Falcon Heavy launching military satellites, and Dragon carrying astronauts. When NASA's programs shut down, SpaceX's programs ramp up. It's almost like someone planned this transition. While NASA cancels nuclear propulsion, SpaceX just unveiled their Raptor 3 engine, the most advanced rocket engine ever built. 280 tons of thrust, 350 seconds of specific impulse, and costs a fraction of anything NASA ever developed. This engine makes NASA's canceled nuclear program look primitive. SpaceX achieved breakthrough efficiency using methane fuel that can be produced on Mars, while NASA was still trying to figure out hydrogen storage. The technology gap isn't closing, it's getting wider every day. Here's what's happening behind closed doors. SpaceX's hiring spree is targeting specific NASA departments. Climate research scientists, SpaceX needs them for Mars terraforming studies. Nuclear propulsion experts, perfect for interplanetary spacecraft, Lunar mission planners? SpaceX and his moon base won't design itself. NASA spent decades training these people with taxpayer money. Now SpaceX gets their expertise for free while NASA's programs crumble. It's the greatest talent heist in American history, and it's completely legal. But SpaceX isn't just taking over American space operations. They're going global. New reports reveal SpaceX is negotiating with Australia to land and launch starships from the land down under. Why Australia? Because if the U.S. government ever tries to control SpaceX too tightly, Musk has a backup plan. Australia is already a close U.S. ally, but they're also more business-friendly and less bureaucratic than NASA. SpaceX could build their third star base in Australia faster than NASA can finish one launch tower. Here's the number that terrifies NASA. SpaceX plans to build 1,000 starships, not 10, not 100. 1,000 of the world's most powerful rockets. NASA's SLS program? They're struggling to build one rocket per year. SpaceX wants to mass-produce spacecraft like cars. When you can build 1,000 rockets, you can afford to lose a few testing new technologies. When you can only build one rocket, every failure is a catastrophe. That's the difference between NASA's caution and SpaceX's innovation. So here's what everyone's really asking. Is SpaceX saving American space exploration, or is SpaceX replacing it entirely? The evidence is overwhelming. Every NASA failure becomes a SpaceX opportunity. Every canceled NASA program opens the door for SpaceX expansion. Every fired NASA scientist potentially becomes a SpaceX employee. NASA's crisis isn't an accident, it's a transition. The question isn't whether SpaceX can save NASA. The question is whether America needs NASA when SpaceX exists. And based on the numbers, the answer is becoming clearer every day. SpaceX launches more often, costs less money, innovates faster, and delivers better results than NASA ever could. We're witnessing the end of government-dominated space exploration and the beginning of the private space age. NASA's budget cuts aren't killing American space dreams. They're forcing America to dream bigger. SpaceX isn't just saving NASA's missions, they're making NASA's missions look small. While NASA planned to return to the moon by 2028, SpaceX is planning to colonize Mars by 2030. 
While NASA struggles to maintain the ISS, SpaceX is designing the spacecraft that will make humanity a multi-planetary species. The real question isn't whether SpaceX can save NASA. The real question is, in 10 years, will anyone remember NASA existed? So here's where we stand today. NASA's 4,000 fired scientists aren't unemployed. They're free agents in the biggest talent auction space has ever seen. SpaceX isn't just building rockets. They're building the future of human civilization. But this story is far from over. Every week brings new revelations about the private space revolution. Next, we're diving deep into how SpaceX's Raptor 3 engine makes NASA's canceled nuclear program look like a horse and buggy. What do you think? Is this the natural evolution of American innovation? Or are we watching the government abandon its responsibility to lead humanity's greatest adventure? Drop your thoughts below, because this conversation is just getting started. The space race isn't ending. It's just changing players. And you're witnessing history unfold in real time. See you in the next one, Space Explorers. SpaceX just revealed why they're sacrificing a $63 million booster in Flight 10, and it shocked their own engineers. They're deliberately crashing a brand new rocket instead of catching it, even though they've nailed two perfect catches. The reason? It's not what anyone expected. What data is so critical that it's worth throwing away $63 million? Let's dive right in. Here's what happened that shocked SpaceX's own engineering team. During Flight 9, they weren't just testing another booster landing. They were pushing booster 14 to its absolute limits with something called a steeper angle of attack. Imagine a skydiver changing position mid-fall to control speed, except this skydiver weighs 3,000 tons and is traveling at Mach 3. The plan was genius. Use more air resistance, burn less fuel, save money. Simple physics, right? Wrong. At six minutes into flight, with 12 of 13 Raptor engines blazing at 4,351 pounds per square inch of chamber pressure, booster 14 simply vanished. Contact lost. No warning. No goodbye. Just gone. But here's where it gets crazy. That failed Flight 9 test was supposed to unlock the secret to Mars colonization. You see, when Starship lands on Mars, there's no Mechazilla tower waiting, no ground crew, just thin Martian atmosphere and whatever fuel you have left. Every single drop of fuel saved during landing becomes fuel for the return trip home. SpaceX engineers had spent months calculating the perfect angle. Too shallow? You waste precious fuel. Too steep? The aerodynamic forces literally tear your rocket apart. Flight 9 was supposed to find that sweet spot where physics meets survival. Instead, they got an explosion. This is where SpaceX's decision becomes absolutely insane or absolutely brilliant. They're taking a brand new $63 million booster equipped with 33 pristine Raptor engines worth over $30 million alone and deliberately crashing it into the Gulf of Mexico. But wait, these aren't just any engines. Booster 16 is powered by Raptor 3 engines, the most advanced rocket engines ever built. Each one can produce 560,000 pounds of thrust while operating at temperatures hot enough to melt copper. We're talking about engines so advanced that when SpaceX first showed them to the world, industry experts thought they were fake. So why sacrifice perfection? Here's what makes a sacrifice brilliant. Raptor 3 engines are completely different beasts from their predecessors. Remember those flying spaghetti monster engines from early Starship flights? Those things look like bird's nests of cables and pipes. Raptor 3? It looks like someone stripped away everything unnecessary and left only the essential core. But here's the shocking part. It's not missing components. Those cables and pipes are still there. They're just integrated inside the engine using 3D printing technology so advanced that SpaceX claims it's the most sophisticated metal printing in the world. This means Raptor 3 can handle extreme conditions that would destroy older engines. The steeper angle attack test that killed Booster 14? Raptor 3 might actually survive it. Now here's what SpaceX hasn't told anyone, and what their engineers are buzzing about. 
Flight 10 isn't just about testing steep angles. It's about testing something called aerodynamic flutter, the point where airflow over the booster becomes so violent it causes structural vibration. Think of it like this. You know how a flag flaps in the wind? Now imagine that flag is made of steel and weighs 200 tons. When Booster 16 hits the atmosphere at the exact angle SpaceX wants to test, the entire vehicle will experience forces that could literally shake it apart. The sensors on Booster 16 will record every vibration, every stress point, every moment where the structure flexes. This data is impossible to simulate on Earth. You can't recreate 3,000 miles per hour atmospheric entry in a wind tunnel. But here's where this gets really wild. The steeper angle technique isn't just about saving fuel, it's about precision landing. When NASA's Artemis III astronauts need to land on the moon in 2027, they'll need to hit their target within meters, not kilometers. The data from Booster 16's sacrifice will directly influence how the human landing system touches down on lunar surface. Every stress measurement, every aerodynamic calculation, every moment of controlled chaos will feed into the computers that guide American astronauts to their first steps on the moon in over 50 years. And here's the kicker. China is watching. They're developing their own lunar landing systems, and they don't have access to SpaceX's Raptor 3 technology. This $63 million test might determine which country dominates lunar exploration for the next century. Remember how I mentioned SpaceX engineers were shocked? Here's why. The Flight 10 sacrifice also tests something SpaceX has never publicly discussed, emergency landing protocols. Right now, if Mechazilla fails during a catch attempt, the entire mission fails. But what if Booster 16's ocean impact data reveals that super heavy boosters can actually survive controlled crashes? What if SpaceX could design emergency landing legs that deploy only when the tower isn't available? The structural stress data from Flight 10's water impact will show exactly how much punishment a booster can take. Even though it's hitting ocean instead of land, the forces are similar enough to design emergency systems that could save billions in hardware. Here's something that'll blow your mind. During Flight 10's steep angle test, the leading edges of Booster 16 will experience temperatures approaching 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt aluminum. The only reason the booster won't disintegrate is because of 